let's get this party going. So if you have any questions? All right. So agile marketing is the new and better way to generate results. By show of hands, how many people have read The Lean Startup? Okay. So you can apply, apply those same uh, processes to marketing. Launching an MVP, you know, minimal viable product, or mi minimal viable campaign, testing it, validating it, iterating on it, and eventually scaling it. So this, this, this is how I run my marketing department at DigitalOcean. You know, we, we always start with a small test, we validate, we iterate, and we scale. So if you're an agile marketer, you need to understand growth hacking. And what is growth hacking? Growth hacking is a set of tactics and best practices to drive user growth. And most importantly, growth hacking is a mindset. Every day I'm thinking about how can I exponentially grow DigitalOcean. It's something that you need to think about every single day for your business. So you need someone on your team. How many, by show of hands, how many people are, are, are considering themselves a marketer here? We got like four people, all right. So should, you might want to look into hiring a marketer. No. <laughs> but it's something that you, know, you, you, need to, you need to fully dedicate yourself to, to growth. Um, and it's something that you need to think about constantly. So I'll, I'll walk through a few examples. Has anyone ever heard of the Hotmail uh, growth hack? So the Hotmail growth hack is, is, was a simple email signature uh, implementation. They, they added, PS, I love you, get your free email at Hotmail, and they linked that to their website to, for users to sign up. When they implemented this, the day after, literally, uh, they saw exponential growth, and when they sold to Microsoft a year and a half later, they had 12 million users. At the time, there was only 70 million internet users. So they had a huge, huge share of the internet. The Dropbox example is great. They've truly, you know, set the bar for referral programs. Um, you can connect your Facebook account, connect your Twitter account, and receive additional storage uh, on your Dropbox account. Uh, you could also refer a friend, and additionally, when you upload a file to Dropbox and you send a link to a friend and they don't have Dropbox, they need to download Dropbox and sign up to download the file. So it's a great uh, growth engine. Airbnb is a great example. They uh, reverse engineered a way to integrate Craigslist into their, into their platform. And Craigslist at the time didn't have an API, so they truly reverse engineered this whole, this whole process. All right. So, when you're starting out and you're acquiring your first 100 users, you want to make as many mistakes as possible. You want to fail as often as possible. You want to offer for free. You want to interview your early adopters, learn as much as possible from those early adopters as you can. You know, literally have coffee with them, take them out to lunch, dive into their thinking and thought process on why they signed up or why they bought your product. You want to set a budget and goals every month. So allocate some type of marketing budget to your, to your strategy. Set goals, set targets, and eventually you know, measure your conversion rates and track your success month on month. So this is something that I did very early on in DigitalOcean when I started running campaigns, when I started to you know, drive users to the platform. I built this very basic, uh, you know, table in, in Excel, um, and I just tracked spend, signups, and essentially our CPA, cost per acquisition. So what this does is it, it, you, you can immediately see when a channel is, is underperforming compared to other channels. So in this example, social media CPA is too high, it might be time to shut it off and allocate more budget to, to another channel. Once you surpass 100 users, now it's time to really dive, you know, to dive into the metrics. You need to understand your monthly churn, your lifetime, customer lifetime value, your cost of, of acquisition, your CAC, your LTV to CAC ratio, and your payback CAC in, in months. All right, so this is, this is where it all, all begins, your product market fit. 
right? You have to validate to, to make sure that you're marketing and selling a product that people actually want and actually want to use. So by measuring your, your monthly churn, if your monthly churn is over 10%, you didn't have the right product market fit. You might want to pivot or rethink your strategy, rethink how, how you're you know, selling your product, your pricing, et cetera. So you can see in this, in this graph to the right, um, the blue line is product A, has a product market fit. This is actually very similar to what DigitalOcean's um, retention chart looks like. And then product B clearly doesn't have a, a product market fit, and you just see a complete drop off in usage. So you want to aim for like roughly you know, 5% or less monthly churn is, is an attractive number. So these are uh, pretty common health metrics. We send these to our investors regularly, update them on our LTV, our CAC, or churn. Um, so from this website, you know, if you go to forentrepreneurs.com backslash sash metrics dash two, and I'll, you can, you'll have the PDF at the end of this. So um, highly recommend checking out that website. It's like the Bible for marketing metrics. But anyway, the, the best SaaS businesses have an LTV to CAC ratio that is higher than three, sometimes as high as, high as seven to eight. So our LTV to CAC ratio is at 26, which is outstanding. And many of the best SaaS businesses are able to recover their CAC in, in five to seven months. So we're able to recover in less than a month. So, I mean, these are very attractive numbers. It's, it's very difficult to hit this, but at least this gives you some type of benchmark and, and, and you know, guideline to follow. All right, so conversion funnel. This is just an example of measuring your conversion funnel month on month, understanding how many people hit your website. Have, at, from those 30,000 people, how many activate or uh, signed up? How many activated? How many stayed on the following month? And then eventually um, paid you, right? So we were we were constantly measuring this in the beginning, and um, you know we we made uh, constant imp improvements to the to the website, to the homepage, to our messaging, to our positioning. So this was the uh, this was the original DigitalOcean website when we entered TechStars. Uh, you could see that there was you know, poor call to actions, there was, you know, the, the, the site was designed pretty poorly. Um, so this was June 19th, 2012. We had a 2.1 acquisition rate, so for everyone that hit the website, 2% uh, signed up, and then once they signed up, 22% activated. These aren't that bad of, of metrics, but, you know, something that we felt like we could significantly improve. So, I quickly, quickly jumped on Photoshop, redesigned the whole website in a couple weeks, and launched um, uh, the, the new uh, homepage, the new layout, with stronger call to actions. Um, we used you know, free, free sign up, uh, try for free, create a free account. We used this inline sign up form with just two fields to get started. And we immediately saw a 147% increase in acquisition rate. But one thing that we found out is that our activation rate stayed the same. So we dug in a little bit deeper. We A-B tested and we tried, you know, we tried to change the copy and, and, we, and, um, and then we eventually landed on changing the, the whole pricing model. When we, when we dropped our, our pricing plan, the, the lowest tier from $10 to $5 a month, you, you can immediately see a, a jump. And this is from our analytics account, Google Analytics account. So we saw a 113% increase in activation rate when we introduced load pricing. So this was, this was our uh, monthly conversion funnel before, roughly, right? So watch what happens when we doubled both our you know, acquisition rate and our activation rate. Watch what happens to the retention number, right? So we 4x growth by focusing and improving on the acquisition activation rates. And it was literally overnight. So this was, this was our, our monthly sign-up rate. Today we're doing roughly 700 sign-ups a day. So 
you want to implement, test, iterate, and scale growth hacks that work for your business. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk through several different marketing tactics and strategies that, that could work for your business or could not work. It's, it's up to you to test and validate. So one thing that we did early on is we gave away uh, a free trial. Um, in addition, we gave away promo codes so that users can sign up and have a $10, $20 credit to use DigitalOcean for an extended period of time. But really, you want to give away as much as possible for free. Um, this is, again, this is the time when you want to dig in, you want to learn your user base, you want to understand why they're using your product, your platform, and collect, collect as much information as possible. You want to make sign up super easy. One to two fields that simply collect email addresses and passwords are ideal. So, you know, some popular websites, Slack, Kissmetrics, if you look at their websites, they all use, like, you know, uh, the inline form field, sign up, instantly grab their information on the first, first time they hit the site. Uh, Kissmetrics also has OAuth integrated, so you can just log in using your Google account. Um, implement drip email automation over one week to educate users on how to get most out of your product and service and incentivize them. I don't know why that's here. That should be moved to a different slide. Anyway. So our first... Uh, our first 50 customers were acquired from New York Tech Meetup. We, um, we were able to demo on stage the first MVP product of DigitalOcean, and we gave away a $50 promo credit to the, to the audience. So it was a way for us to you know, build that early foundation of, of user base. Um, we included promo codes and ad text for campaigns, which worked really well. They drove down our uh, CPA and increased our conversions. Content marketing is something that we've uh, invested in heavily. Um, we have a team of six in-house technical writers that are focused on building, building out uh, tutorials on how to configure your server uh, with various different languages, programming languages. And today, we receive roughly 3 point million unique visits a, uh, a month. So now is the time for you guys to start investing in content. If you want to build traffic for your website for the long term, you have to invest in it now because it's going to pay dividends down the road and you're going to be happy that you started now and not two, three years later. So if you haven't already, start blogging, start writing articles, start publishing videos. Aim to write 20 posts per month if you can, five per week. Um, you could even hire a writer um, uh, locally for oh, this, this deck? Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't need to write anything down. Just uh, we'll send it out after, after this. And I, I also i will have my email address up at the end, so you can just email me. Um, launch a, a question and answer section. If you have like a, uh, you know, an online uh, SaaS or, or past product, you can you know, launch a forum or QA section on your website to create user-generated content. Uh, topic headlines, use the BuzzFeed tactics sometimes, works really well. Uh, like, you know, use odd numbers, starting the, the headline, like 11 top whatever, 15 top whatever, uh, usually generates uh, uh, more traffic than, than other, you know, bland, generic headlines. Google likes longer content, 500 plus words per page. Uh, DigitalOcean right now pays our, our, our community $200 per tutorial that they submit. So there's actually developers that make a living by submitting tutorials to DigitalOcean now. Um, we pay, so we pay $200, and then each tutorial for us generates on average $400 a month in MRR. So it's a, it's a very attractive return. Uh, use a uh, Google Keyword Tool. Uh, to have a you know general idea of the top keywords in your you know market that relate to your business uh, that generate the most traffic and then so start highlighting those keywords in your content it's very important for SEO uh, collect email addresses at the bottom of, of your, your you know your blog posts your articles um, and we'll get into this later uh, optimize your headlines, make sure you're using best, you know, SEO best practices, use H1, H2, H3 tags, 
Um, make sure your URL strings are optimized so that you're using dashes and not um, under, uh, whatever the underline is, <laughs> dash. Yeah, so build links through guest posts, product reviews. Uh, you know, it's great to just, you know, ping a, a blogger related to your, you know, your product or someone that writes about your, your industry. You know, ask them if you can submit a guest post or, you know, take, take an interview. It's a great way to, to generate backlinks. Uh, Hacker News and Reddit are great to start generating, uh, you know, start generating a, a snowball effect of traffic to your website early on. Um, it's just an example of our, uh, our, our Q&A section on our website. So this is what user-generated content looks like on DigitalOcean. So someone would just go to our community page, submit a question, um, and then you can see here we've, you know, added multiple call to actions with social shares and the ability to log in and sign up to comment. So we collect their email addresses, optimize URL string. We use H1 tags for the title. And this all gets uh, indexed in Google and, and appears on, typically on the first page for you know, this related search to you know, uploading, uploading Node.js, right? Uh, we used Google Analytics early on. I'm sure everyone here is starting to use Google Analytics and, and looking at it daily. Um, and that's, that's great. So when, whenever you produce a link through a campaign, through a tweet, through any type of initiative, it's great to use the uh, Google Analytics URL builder here on the right. This way you can you know, track within Google Analytics where, where your signups are coming from. And you simply just put in your website URL, your source, the medium, if it's like a banner ad or email campaign or text ad, and then the campaign name below. Um, so, and then additionally, you want to make sure that the traffic you're driving to your website is of high quality. You, you want to ensure that you're not sending traffic to your website with, with a high bounce rate, with low pages per visit, the time on site's low. You want to make sure that users, you know, the visits are, are, visitors are engaging with your website. Display advertising um, is not long-term sustainable and, and scalable. It's a great way for you to build a, an early foundation, early uh, user base. So we used buy, sell ads, and we bought a couple of ad placements on uh, related Linux websites like Ubuntu Geek and OMG Ubuntu. Um, and this was just an example of, of one banner ad that we, that we ran. So like short headlines work, include and incentivize, an, uh, include incentive and a, and a strong CTA. So we just included a promo code at the bottom for a $20 credit. So these did very well. We, you know, we generated you know, 10, 20 signups a month, but it was a lot for us in the beginning. PR 90 seconds, all right. So, PR works really well. Um, it's a great way for you to build credibility, um, to create awareness, especially with investors. They're constantly reading TechCrunch and all the related tech pubs on, on the internet. So it's good for you to constantly stay top of mind for not only your investors, but your customers. Um, you want to build relationships with, with the writers in, in, the, uh, in the tech pub industry. So when you do secure that exclusive or that article or that interview, make sure that you take down their contact information, take them out to coffee, start building a relationship so that when you have another big news stories to share, um, you, you can easily ping them for that, for that interview. And work your network. Techstars has an amazing network. You know, make sure that when you go to demo day that you have some interviews lined up so that when you know, you're pitching to investors, at the end of it, they know who you, who you are already, and it helps. So make sure you, you uh, bug Alex for all his contacts. So this was the uh, TechCrunch example. Um, this, this is what really set us off in the beginning. Uh, it, it was, uh, you know, again, revolutionary to, to the industry and, and to our business. And actually, I got this. Uh, this article through a friend that um, knew, knew the writer at TechCrunch, Romain Dillett. So it was just you know finding that personal network connection and making it happen. 
Retargeting has one of the best CPAs, so again, content marketing is important. The more you invest now, the better. So when you build your content engine, you can then leverage it by using retargeting. Retargeting is those annoying ads that you see on Facebook and on all the different websites throughout the internet. Uh, so when you go to Zappos and all of a sudden you see the same shoe on the right side of Facebook, you're like, oh shit, how do they know? Well, it's through the retargeting channels and the platforms like Google uh, AdWords, AdRoll, Retargeter, that leverage this technology, it works extremely, extremely well. So our community and our retargeting channel contributes 12% of our revenue today. Also, pre-roll advertising through YouTube works. Um, and ad roll is good for, for face, uh, Facebook retargeting. And I believe they now do Twitter retargeting. Um, not 100% sure. I know we're used, we use Twitter's retargeting platform directly. Referrals in 90 seconds. All right. So referrals are huge. Uh, if you have the right product market fit, people love you, you have an I, a high NPS score, net promoter score, leverage your referral program. All right. The majority of your of new business is going to come in through word of mouth. So empower those users to spread the referral links, to earn credit, to give them some type of incentive now to refer their friends. So I recommend building your own in-house program. That's what we did. So it's a little bit more difficult. Um, if you don't want to do that and you want to outsource your referral program, you can use Get Ambassador. Um, I believe they're a tech. Techstars company as well. Uh, incorporate easy social and email sharing. So right now we have the ability to, for, for users to send an email invite as well as tweet a, uh, a preset uh, tweet with their link in it uh, on Twitter. So if you actually go to search.twitter.com and you search DigitalOcean, you'll see like all the, you know, uh, the same referral type tweets on there. Also, what we've done is, and, and, I'll, and I'll walk through this, uh, walk you through this on the next slide, is we've introduced a uh, what's called a double-sided referral program. So this is uh, this is our our referral growth over the past 12 months, uh, ending in December 2014. So you can you clearly see an upward trend, and again, like today, it accounts for nearly 30% of our of our monthly signups. But right here on August 26. We introduced a double-sided referral program so that users could then send their friends a $10 credit. And in return, once they hit $25 in billings, they receive $25 in credit as well. So it's a, it's a two-way incentive. Um, Uber, Dropbox, uh, a lot of, a lot of you know, successful companies, Airbnb, they all use this double-sided referral program approach. It, it could work really well for your business. Um, also, again, our, our MPS score is a, is a 69, which is very high. Amazon and Apple are 71, 72, so it's, it's very high. So we, when, you, when you track your MPS score, and you can Google it and look, look how to track it, send out a survey, you know, rate 1 to 10, how likely are you to refer a friend to your product, and then they'll, they'll tell you how to calculate it. But ultimately, if your MPS score is in the 60s, you're doing pretty well. Social media marketing works well. Twitter has their own ad platform now. One thing that we did early on is we um, basically downloaded all the followers from, from all our competitors, Rackspace, AWS, Linode, and we just loaded them into Twitter ads and we just tar start targeting each, each follower with a DigitalOcean ad, with the promo code. Um, it was a great way to, you know, again, build a, build a, a new channel. Email marketing, um, again, it's, uh, you know, with, with, your, with your user base, you want to make sure that you're always um, pinging them as often as you can. You know, aim for like two to three uh, touch points per month with your users. Uh, short headlines work really well. Short subject lines, like thank you, this email to the right did very well for us in terms of open rate. 
the best times to emails between Tuesday and Thursdays between the hours of 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's like the peak of web traffic on the internet, the peak time of web traffic. Um, A-B test every email. We use you know, Campaign Monitor now before we use MailChimp. They're all great mark email marketing tools. Start building out your email list and start using them. This is a, a growth hack that we implemented to mitigate retention, you know, to, to, increase, to increase our retention, rather. So um, this was an automated email that was sent out once a user spun down their droplet on DigitalOcean, spun down their cloud server. So they went from spending money to not spending money. We sent them an email 14 days later from Ben, our CEO, with the following message. I'll read it really quick. I've noticed that you signed up for DigitalOcean but have spun down your droplet, sad face, we are striving to provide the best cloud hosting experience for developers and would love for you to give us a shot. We've gone ahead and credited your account $5, which will provide you with one free month of hosting on our 512 megabyte droplet. We hope you come back and start using DigitalOcean again. Because we're a bunch of perfectionists and are always looking to improve our product, any feedback that you're willing to provide us would be much appreciated. Feel free to shoot me an email at CEO at DigitalOcean.com with your comments. Thank you so much. Ben Uretsky, co-founder and CEO. CEO at DigitalOcean.com didn't go to Ben. It went to an inbox, and we had uh, an associate dedicated to answering those emails. So it was a great, it was a great way to you know, create, create that personal touch point, and um, it was a great way to mitigate churn. We gave them a $5 credit to come back and try us again. Um, you can use segment.io or customize.io to set this up. And after 30 days, these were our, our numbers. So we sent out 4,700 emails. Out of the 4,700, 6, 688 reactivated 15% and generated a monthly run rate of $8,000. So worked very well. Um, and today, we're still, we're still using this uh, retention growth hack. Three things that we haven't tried yet. Um, I hear some companies here are using a, in a waiting list, an invite list that works really well. Um, there's been a lot of you know, great use cases and success stories that came from the invite list. Google does it really well. Uh, this new app called Robinhood, uh, it's like the financial the stock trading zero commission app does very well. They have like a waiting list of 500,000 whatever users. Um, so, but we're planning, DigitalOcean is planning to use this for our next big product uh, launch. Um, so that potentially could be our object storage once it uh, hits the market. Um, OAuth login, uh, Airbnb, uh, sorry, yeah, Airbnb uses this and Kissmetrics again. So uh, when they hit your website, you know, having that one click sign up uh, creates an easy onboarding flow for, for your website visitors. So you can integrate with Google, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub. For us, GitHub makes sense or LinkedIn. Also, uh, what OAuth allows is it, it enables users to import their Gmail contacts. So in our referral program, as a next step for us, we want to enable users to integrate their Gmail, to authorize their Gmail application to import all their contacts and then send multiple invites instead of one, with one click. So at the end of the day, this is what you want to create for your business. You want to create a viral growth engine. And it all starts with driving high quality traffic to your website. So again, start building content today. Um, build a PR strategy, social media strategy. Start you know, building your, your display advertising efforts your te you know, with, with text ads through PPC and AdWords. Content marketing, again, build content. Optimize that content with SEO tactics. Once the visitors consume the content, you want to make sure that you have CTAs on that page somewhere. You want to collect their email addresses, get MailChimp, get Campaign Monitor integrated with your, with your app. When the visitor leaves the website, it is, they're then retargeted with ads. Again, use those retargeting platforms and channels. They eventually return to your website after they speak to a few friends and they you know, contemplate and eventually decide to purchase. You can incentivize them with the free trial and promo code, uh, and also making sure that you're always A-B testing your, using Optimizely, you're, you're A-B testing your conversion rates, you're optimizing the funnel, um, using different copying, different call to actions. And then finally, the last step is once they start using your product, 
you want to incentivize them with some type of referral program to give them a credit, give their friend a credit. And then if they do leave, uh, and for us it's 2% monthly of users leave, uh, they receive a, you know, an email with some type of incentive to come back. And then essentially just creates this snowball effect for your business. So if you want to learn more about growth hacking, go to growthhackers.com. It's a great website. You can subscribe to it. Uh, Sean Ellis, one of the uh, early uh, uh, marketers that coined the term growth hacking, created this. Also buy this book yesterday. It's called Traction. It's by Gabriel Weinberg, uh, the co-founder of DuckDuckGo. Amazing book. It also talks a lot about all these different marketing channels and strategies uh, and similar to, to the ones that I discussed. If you have any questions, just shoot me an email too. That's it. <laughs> questions? Um, I, know you, uh, I know you mentioned Reddit. Um, and I found, so Reddit is kind of tricky, right? Because the community is, the community is tough, everybody's anonymous. Um, I see the potential for incredible growth on Reddit, but I also see the potential for everybody to just go in and downvote because you know your product's not free and everybody wants everything for free. So I'm wondering why um, or how you've used Reddit in the past, and if it's been successful, and what techniques you would recommend for approaching the Reddit community, which is a very specific community, to get the most out of that. Yeah, I mean we've been very fortunate. We ha we now have our own Reddit channel, which is pretty cool. Uh, but early on, I think. The most important thing to focus on is to make sure that you're being as authentic as possible. Um, and we've hired uh, two community managers and plus our social media manager that actually goes and answers questions on Quora, on Reddit, on Stack Overflow even. And really what you want to do is you just, you want to build awareness and, and create those one-to-one -one relationships with individuals on these different uh, community channels like Reddit, and once you start doing that, it just, you know, it, it just starts snowballing. The more you do it, the more awareness you build, and over time, you're recognized more as a, as a, as a true thought leader in your space, right? And that's what you really want to shoot for, is you want to be known as, you know, the guy who knows everything about, you know, virtual reality software, right? How and how fast into a marketing team growth? Oh. Um, so my marketing team today in, like, that focuses on pure acquisition is a team of two, plus a consultant. Um, early on, it was just me uh, because I was able to design a website, do front end, CSS, and you know, in, in implement all these different tactics myself. Um, but what I did do is I built out a, a content team very quickly to where now our community team as a whole it also includes like evangelism now, but it's 20 people. Um, so I'm heavily swayed to content uh, with my with my uh, marketing, you know, org structure. Besides Hacker News and uh, Reddit, did you guys use more uh, uh, publications to get the word out there? Uh, yeah, I mean, we we hired a a, a PR firm pretty early on, um, 5WPR. We paid them five thousand dollars a month, which was you know reasonable at the time, uh, and they you know they were able to secure multiple tech pubs to, to write about us. Um, but you know we eventually you know outgrew them because they were more of a, a, a generalist type PR agency that didn't really understand like infrastructure well enough to communicate the story to the to the writers. And I mean now we're we. We have a, another PR agency, but we're hiring a director of comms in-house to that you know to build up a Rolodex, to build those relationships, to really run a thought leadership strategy uh, moving forward. So, um, but you know, again, it, 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 if you have the budget, if you have you know the resources on your team to interfa interface with an agency, it might make sense. You know, I know there's other. I think there's small girls PR. I think they're, you know, I'm not sure what their retainer is, but you know, there's some agencies out there that might fit your budget. You mentioned that tutorials you thought were with 400 MRR. How do you, how did you arrive at that valuation? 
So we have uh, a very basic multi-attribution tracking model built out where we understand like when someone comes to our website on the first click and then last click before they register. Um, and we, we dig that information out of our SQL database. Um, so using both the first click and last click uh, measures, whenever they hit a tutorial on first click and then tutorial on last click, we then you know, overlap them and then come, come to a, uh, a, a, a revenue number and, and customer total number so that we can then assess, all right, our community tour tutorials produced you know, $800,000 a month for us, right? And then we, we divided that by the number of tutorials in our community and then just weighted it out and just came up with an average. How long did it take before the content marketing became profitable? Uh, so it became profitable right away, actually. We actually, we got, we got fairly lucky. There's no other uh, company that uh, produces a, a knowledge base similar to ours that's, uh, that's public, that's um, optimized. So, you know, we really became sort of the, the knowledge base for server configurations on the internet. No one really, like, truly owned that market. So we, we leveraged that pretty early on and we kept running with it. Is it only tech or do you guys also just one of the other firms we were talking to? Uh, they did articles about hiring, sales, everything around their business and that for them. So so again, like going back to what I was saying about the first hundred users, like you want to understand what they're reading every day. Like what what type of content are they consuming? Right? And once you understand what type of content you're consuming, you could build a content strategy around that and then write similar content. 